All right, this is the big deal thing of work and energy. Today we're going to be talking about the conservation of energy. And as far as we're concerned in, in, in first year pre-AP physics, this is the thing that kind of holds everything together that we've done in mechanics so far. So everything really falls under this <clears throat> idea of the conservation of energy. Force falls under it. Kinematics makes more sense when we talk about it in terms of the conservation of energy. It's a big deal. Momentum makes a little bit more sense in terms of the conservation of energy. It's, it's really something that's very important. So we're going to look at what the conservation of energy means. We're going to look at situations in which we do have the conservation of energy and in other situations in which mechanical energy is not conserved. Um, we're going to apply conservation of energy to a couple of systems. And we'll look at conservation of energy with springs. Now, let's be very clear. When we say conservation of energy, we mean that in any system, in a closed system, energy is neither created nor destroyed. Energy doesn't go anywhere. <clears throat> it changes forms. It goes from one object to another, but it's always there somehow. Again, that's the conservation of energy. So, <clears throat> it's also the conservation of mass. So, anytime in any system, let's say we have a box and we're pushing it with an acceleration of zero, which means a constant velocity, and here you are. And it's gonna move this way. Now, you do work. Friction does work. All right, now, you are applying a force. Your work, your ability to do this, the energy for you, comes from chemical energy stored in the food that you eat and in your muscles. As you push the block, though, your work goes into moving the block and into overcoming friction. Friction also does work. That's the, uh, that's the negative kind of work. So the energy that you put into the box, instead of going into, let's say, kinetic energy for the box, becomes heat energy. That's what friction does. When, when we deal with friction, it becomes heat energy. Right? Another example of the conservation of energy. And that's not the button I wanted. Another example of the conservation of energy. Just an even simpler one. You have a force pushing a box a distance of delta x. Let's say that force is coming from you. Again, that's chemical energy into <clears throat> mechanical energy. This force times delta x is work done on the box, which, if there's nothing else, becomes kinetic energy of the box. Here we see that force is becoming kinetic energy. Now that's not coming out of anywhere. The ability to do this force comes from a different type of energy, but that force becomes mechanical energy. In the same way, if we have a force lifting a box against its weight for a distance, that force does work, and that came from somewhere, some stored energy somewhere. Sorry. And weight does work. And we get potential energy out of this. This force is doing work against gravity. We get potential energy out of what happens here. All of these things are energy transformations. And that's the big deal with the conservation of energy. We start off with a set amount of energy. 
And no matter what we do in our system, we always have that set amount of energy. Now, energy transformations can get crazy. So, in mechanical energy, we're going to say that the total of any energy of any system is going to be kinetic plus potential. At any point in any system, our total energy is a combination of motion energy and position or potential energy. Now, we have two possibilities. The first one is gravitational. All right? Gravitational potential energy is MGH. The question we have to ask ourselves is did our height change? Our other possibility is the elastic or spring potential. And our question there is did we compress a spring? Did we stretch or compress a spring? But for us, in mechanical energy, it's just going to transform between kinetic energy and potential energy. And since both of these, both of my potential energies, spring potential is US, one half kx squared. Since both of those have to do with position, we're going to know if we change those based on the changing position of the object uh, that we're talking about. So, let's say we have a simple example of a spring. Say we have a spring. Put a mass right here. Now, let's say the spring is compressed, unstretched it would be here, and we pushed it back delta x. We applied a force pushing that thing backwards, storing up energy in the spring. So right now, in this situation, my total energy, which could be a combination of kinetic and potential energies, is just spring potential energy because I'm not moving. So my total energy at this point is equal to one half times k times delta x squared. And let's say we take and we let go. So the spring is unstretched and now my block is moving with a velocity v in this direction. I don't want to deal with the acceleration I want to see how any of all all the force transfers worked. All I'm after is how fast we're going. Well, right here, the energy, again, could be a combination of kinetic or potential. But you know what? My, string's not, my spring is not compressed anymore, and we're free of it. So, my potential energy is zero, making the total energy kinetic, one-half mv squared. So, all of this potential energy here became kinetic energy down here. And if I wanted to find out how fast I was going, I'd just say 1 half k delta x squared, got to square that up here, is equal to 1 half mv squared. Plug in numbers and you could find your velocity. It's a very simple example. Here's a gravity example. Let's say we start off on the ground. We have a mass of m. And we're going to pull with mg, lifting that thing up a height of h. Now, gravity is going to do work. Right? Gravity is pulling down. The work done by gravity is going to be negative mgh, but we know that I'm also going to do work. My work, work of me, 
is going to be my force mg times my displacement h. Now that tells me that the network is equal to zero, which means my kinetic energy doesn't change. But I have in lifting this object up done work against gravity, which means I have a potential energy of the work done against gravity, the opposite of the work of gravity. My potential energy up here is mgh. So in lifting this object, I gave it potential energy mgh. We don't need to look at that anymore. Now, let's say we are up here. Let's say we are up here now. Same block mass m. We have potential energy mgh. We're a height above the ground, and we let go. In that case, the block falls from here all the way down to here. Up here, the total energy is potential. Down here, well, what happens when you let go of something from here to here? It's going to pick up speed. And I'm back down here to zero on the ground where the potential energy is equal to zero. So my energy is all kinetic. One half mv squared. In dropping this object, gravity did its work pulling it down. And we have kinetic energy down here. So my mgh from the top is equal to 1 half mv squared. And with a little bit of algebra, we could figure out how fast it was going. Now, they're all sort of complicated examples. Um, and we're just going to talk through one. Say we have a little bit of a roller coaster. So we're going to drop a mass down our roller coaster. It's going to loop the loop. And then it's going to run into a spring down here. It's going to compress the spring and stop it. Now we have a whole lot of different things going on. First thing we have to note is that we start off with a height of, we'll call it capital H. So up here, if we start off at rest, let's write that down, my total energy is potential, gravitational potential energy, and it's the mass times the gravity times the height. That's the total energy of my system. So when I'm right here, my total energy is equal to mass times the gravity times that original height. When I'm right here, my total energy is equal to whatever that number is, mass times gravity times height. When we've hit the spring and compressed it, my total energy is still equal to mass times gravity times height. But what's happened as we go along this roller coaster is that it's changed forms. Up here, so we have a different height, lowercase h. Up here, I have a combination of gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. mg little h plus 1 half mv squared. I have two different kinds of energy. But I could figure out how fast I'm going based on that height. Down here, it's all kinetic. I've lost all of my potential energy. I have all kinetic energy. So the original energy is all kinetic. Over here, I've hit the spring and stopped moving. So we are all spring potential energy at this point. That's 1 half kx squared. So we started off here with gravitational potential energy. We lost gravitational potential energy, gained kinetic energy. Lost gravitational energy, gained kinetic energy. Started going back up, gained gravitational potential energy, lost kinetic energy, but not all of it. Lost gravitational energy, gained kinetic energy. Lost all of our gravitational, we're all kinetic now. And then when we hit the spring, we lose kinetic energy and we gain spring potential energy. But my total energy stayed the same throughout the entire trip. It just changed forms.